Okay, so here's a quick intro to supply and demand. Basically, a supply and demand is a zone rather than a support resistance level. And the idea is that price has been there a few times before, likely to visit there again. They often create a little bit of a range. So rather than explaining it any deeper than that, let me actually show you on the chart. So in essence, what you'll find is when the price has actually come up and tagged a certain level, so maybe this high up here, you might find this low down here as an example. These are giving you support resistance levels. Now, in terms of supply and demand, what I'd like to use is a little bit of a zone. So if you can imagine, we'll take it from the top here and we'll bring it all the way up. You can even go to the bodies rather than the wicks if you'd like. Again, no real perfect example. And the general idea is that you're going to have stops of long positions and stops short positions. So you might find that there's a few stops around here. Obviously, the price coming up here. And the general idea is that it's a little bit of a magnet to price. So if we look at the lower end, we'll probably find that in this little cluster along this level, we're probably likely to see another couple of targets as price will to and fro from these levels. And although we've had a dip below, these actually look like stop hunts rather than obviously trend reversals. So the general idea is that we'll come up, we'll visit back again We've obviously taken a stop hunt and straight up to the next zone. Now, as you can see, the price drops, comes back to almost test that zone before falling down. And I guess what we can see again is another move up, push back down, and we're likely to test this another time. So instead of looking at pure one level, one line, like we see with the support resistance, we've actually now identified a little zone that we're expecting the price to come into. There's a couple of methods in terms of doing this, but this is the quickest, easiest way to explain this. Now, one advantage that we have at Mayfair, we've actually got an indicator that paints some of these key zones and levels for us. So we actually, if we drop back a little bit, we actually see levels that are in green are the ones closest to us as a whole. So what I like to do is to mark these up. There's the first one. There's a couple there, a bit of a cluster. We've actually got ones that are slightly further away, which you could even put in and make a little bit more transparent, or even a different color. And then what we have is the ones in red are bigger. So you'll probably find on a larger time frame, these are a little bit more relevant as a whole. So ideally, as the price comes or leaves these particular zones, you'll tend to find it attractive back to the next levels once you've got an additional confirmation of that actually moving in this direction. Now, in this particular example, what you might find is that the price might move up, come out, collect some of the liquidity that's sitting above this level here, which is in relation to this over here. And therefore, we've got another little zone. And if you were just using a support resistance level, then obviously that could tag it, move up, and you have no idea as to why. So I hope this helps. And that's basically a quick intro into supply and demand.